The Tax-Free Savings Account, or TFSA, is a great tool for a young person, a middle-aged person, a retired person, because you get to keep all of the investment growth that happens inside the account, and you get to keep it forever. And so in this video, I'm gonna explain a few things that you want to avoid to make sure that you get all of the benefits of the TFSA. The first thing you definitely don't wanna do with the TFSA is day trade inside of it. Day trading is the idea of trading that's buying and selling stocks on a high frequency basis. Typically speaking, you open the day, you buy your stocks, you, at, throughout the day you end up buying and selling, buying and selling. At the end of the day, you sell everything and you sit on a pile of cash. That's typical day trading uh, as far as the definition goes. And so for people that end up being successful with that, very few of them, by the way, uh, but the few people that are able to be successful with that, there have been cases already where the Canada Revenue Agency, or CRA, has come back and said, actually, it looks like you're running a business inside of your TFSA, because in some cases, they actually made a ton of money in there. So there are some weird rules with the TFSA where the CRA can come back to you and say, if you're running a business, that's actually business income, and that is not tax exempt in this case. So they can look at a variety of things, like your frequency of trading, your knowledge and experience, your use of leverage, um, all sorts of different things, and they can decide without any sort of specifics, they are not going to put it online and say like, this is how many trades you can do, this is the knowledge you can have, nothing like that. So day trading, especially profitable day trading, is something that is kind of a no-fly zone for TFSA investors. The problem in this specific case is that if you're found to have invested in a way that resembles um, actually running a business inside of your TFSA, they will tax you on the income. But in my opinion here, I don't know if there's actually a case on this, but it, I do not believe that there would be a case to be made to be able to deduct any expenses that you incur along the way as a result of it. So this is just an absolute dumb move please do not do this. Use your TFSA for prudent long-term investing. A similar but different version of this that would be mistake number two in my mind would be trading individual stocks. The reason I don't like to trade individual stocks inside of a TFSA is that you do not get the benefit of being able to write off any losses that happen in there. So anyone that's invested for any period of time knows that not every stock you pick or every fund you pick is gonna be an absolute winner. And so when you have losers um, in a non-registered account, you can use losses to offset future gains and there can be a tax benefit there. In a TFSA, if you have losers that go to zero, you can never get that contribution room back. You get no tax benefit from claiming that loss, there's nothing there. You just lose it. So in my mind, investing with a broadly diversified strategy using mutual funds or ETFs is a great way to go to make sure that you don't have too many instances where you have the opportunity to have a permanent loss of capital inside of your TFSA. I recently met with somebody who had $70,000 in a TFSA and they invested in penny stocks thinking that it was just gonna take off and it's like, oh great, the TFSA will protect me from all of these gains I'm gonna have. Turns out that's incredibly difficult to do and picking individual stocks, especially penny stocks and garbage like that, it's very, very hard to do. So in this person's case, they lost everything that went into their TFSA. So that contribution room is gone forever and they're starting from scratch. You only get the new room that happens every single year because you put the contributions in, you invested it, it went to zero, and so you don't get that room back. The only way you get room back from a TFSA is if you withdraw something. And withdrawing does not count as the same as losing money in the account. So you want to minimize the opportunity to have permanent losses of capital inside your TFSA because that contribution room is so valuable to you over the course of your entire life. Mistake number three would be over contributing to your TFSA. If you don't know how much you can contribute to your TFSA, check out this video over here where I go in detail as to how much contribution you will have so that you don't make this mistake. Over contributing to your TFSA can come with a 1% per month penalty on any amount over your allowed contribution rooms. Mistake number four is recontributing in the same year that you made a withdrawal. So again, in that previous video that I linked before, I talk about how those rules work. So when you make a contribution 
to your TFSA and you withdraw it, you don't get to contribute that same amount back into your TFSA until the calendar year rolls over. And so many people will take money out and put money in, take money out, put money in, and they don't really realize that they're over contributing in the process. So these two mistakes go hand in hand and it comes with that same penalty. Now, it is worth mentioning that in some instances, there are simple mistakes that people make and Canada Revenue Agency has been known in the past to issue warnings by letter and explain exactly what you did. And in many cases, people didn't realize that that was their mistake. And so if you are able to show proof that you then withdrew your over contributions and, um, and it was a mistake and you weren't trying to profit necessarily from your over contributions, there have been instances where CRA says, okay, that's great, this is your one warning, thank you very much, please don't do it again. Um, so you wanna be careful, but you also don't want to bank on the fact that CRA might be generous with you this time. The next mistake you don't wanna make with your TFSA is using leverage. Leverage is the idea of borrowing money to invest, and you can do that through a whole bunch of different ways, but easiest one that people often do will be borrowing from a line of credit, contributing to a TFSA, and then investing inside the TFSA. In my mind, the two reasons that you don't wanna do that are the first one, why you might not wanna use leverage in the first place, is that leverage magnifies your results. And so it's great if it works, it's terrible if it doesn't. So adding leverage increases the odds that you could not only lose everything, but you could lose more than everything. So again, let's use an example here. Say you borrow $10,000 from your line of credit, and currently lines of credit um, tied to your house, they usually cost somewhere in the realm of prime plus one. Think of that around 8% per year, right now here in uh, early 2024. And say you take that $10,000, you put it inside your TFSA, and you invest it in some garbage stock that you only realize is garbage in hindsight because everybody invests thinking that they've got the best next great thing, whatever. And so you realize after the fact, oh no, this is a pile of garbage and this investment goes to zero. And when it declines and it goes to zero, you've lost everything, you've lost your money and you've lost your contribution room, but hold up, you still have this debt over here on your line of credit that you have to pay back. And so you've lost everything here plus interest. So on 10,000 bucks at 8%, that's not very fun. You have to come up with that money on your own. So using leverage inside of a TFSA, you have the potential to lose everything and then some. And the worst part is if you're borrowing to invest inside a TFSA, that interest is not tax deductible against other sources of income. So if you are borrowing to invest in a non-registered account, you can deduct your interest in that case, but not when you are borrowing to invest in either a TFSA or an RRSP. Leverage is something that is really niche and it's for people that are in a really unique circumstance that maybe can use it. But here on YouTube, if I'm giving blanket advice to anybody that might be watching this video, please do not borrow to invest. The potential outcomes here are not worth the potential risks. And so borrowing to invest inside of a TFSA is a mistake that you definitely want to avoid. The last mistake that I'm gonna mention here on this video is naming an incorrect beneficiary. So when you have a TFSA, that's a plan type. So a TFSA is what we call a plan type, an RSP is a plan type. And when you have a registered plan like this, you can name a beneficiary. And a beneficiary is someone who just gets your money after you die. And in the case of a TFSA, there's a unique beneficiary rule for spouses, and it's called a successor holder. So those are the two types of beneficiaries you wanna keep in mind. The first one, just beneficiary. The second one is a successor holder, and that's for a spouse or common law partner. So the reason you wanna make sure that your beneficiaries are correct is that when you pass away, you want your money to go to someone you love and someone that you know would benefit from that money. In many cases, if you are married or you have a common law partner, naming your spouse there would be the absolute no-brainer option to do. So what happens with a successor holder designation is that if you were to pass away and your spouse is named as your successor holder, your money then rolls over to them and they can actually absorb that into their TFSA and keep that money invested tax-free 
forever. It's a really great rule that allows the tax-free benefits of a TFSA to continue on even beyond your own lifetime. So for folks that are close to retirement, um, in retirement and in elderly ages, I still recommend using TFSAs because of these amazing benefits that continue on beyond them. If you do not have a spouse that you can roll your uh, TFSA over two through a successor holder designation, you can use a beneficiary to pass it on to someone who isn't a spouse. The difference there is that they cannot roll it into their own TFSA afterwards, but they receive the money tax-free. In Canada, we don't have estate or gift taxes, and so in that case, if you name a friend, if you name a child, even an adult child, whatever, you can name them as a beneficiary on your TFSA and they'll receive that money tax-free. It flows through your estate without hitting probate or anything like that. It's a really clean and simple way to do it. So if you have a TFSA, please make sure you name a beneficiary. If this list of TFSA mistakes was helpful for you in building your long-term TFSA investment portfolio, give me a subscribe or a like and uh, share it with a friend. And hopefully this will be helpful for them too. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.